As a massive fan of creepy Disney things, I've spent countless hours learning obscure facts about the park's history. Once I start, I can't seem to stop digging into the urban legends surrounding certain events and attractions. This fanatic addiction is what brought me on the path towards learning the untold origins of the Haunted Mansion boat ride. It was going to be called Captain Culpepper's Crypt and was a ride based on the infamous gravestone within the attraction's queue line. The tombstone reads, The captain had braved the sea, only to die in his very own bathtub. The thing that many people didn't know about this character from the queue line is, he was actually based on a real person. A homeless man who would oddly dress in a sailor raincoat and would launder around Disney Studios begging for food. Walt apparently helped him get back on his feet a few times, only to see him continually fall back into alcoholism and despair. Many of the employees there, including Walt, gave up faith on the man and eventually started ignoring him, even going as far as stepping over him and avoiding eye contact when they would walk by. That wasn't until one day, Walt was walking up to the studio and noticed the man was lying face down in a puddle outside. Authorities were called and they declared the man had starved to death over the past month or so living outside the studio. Ever since then, Walt and many of his other employees would speak about him in passing, always referring to him as Captain Culpepper, due to him looking a little like the villain from the 1963 film, Mad 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 World. They essentially all felt very bad for ignoring the man, but also claimed that some people, you just couldn't help. That's why Walt later decided to dedicate a character in the original Haunted Mansion to the old sailor. He asserted that even though the man was not able to create anything very memorable in his own life, at least he could inspire a great character within his. Years later, when Walt conceived the second Haunted Mansion for Disney World, this captain figure was amplified and Imagineers decided to create a mock-up of an actual water-based ride of its own to be positioned behind the mansion in the woods. Most people do not know, but the actually became construction of this ride. However, from the early days of it being built, the project was riddled with issues. Fires would start for seemingly no reason and birds would just kill themselves in the construction area. Then even a worker was killed due to a freak accident when he tried leaning on one of the makeshift cliff sides and the entire facade came tumbling down onto him. It was at this point that Walt's brother Roy decided to put an end to the construction of the ride. He was always a more pragmatic man than Walt, but the kind of issues they were having with the building were unlike any he had ever experienced. And even he was beginning to be a little suspicious. It was well known in their circle that Captain Culpepper was based on a man who died outside the studio, so things were definitely seeming pretty spooky. The other issue was due to pragmatic building location up on the hill in close proximity to the haunted mansion. They weren't able to easily remove components that had already been built there. It's rumored there was even a small body of water created alongside with a number of buildings and a creepy large sailor statue in the woods, built out of bamboo and reeds. In the ride's script, the statue was apparently built for the captain by a mysterious tribal people. Learning about this ride as a Disney geek slash urban explorer was probably not a great idea. My buddy Jason and I also write a blog about exploring Disney parks, so this was definitely something we were going to check out. However, it would take some planning sneaking into the backstage areas in the park as it was not as easy as it might seem. We would need to research employee rotation, break patterns, etc. Not to mention getting back there when there weren't any other guests around. So one night a few months ago, we finally did it. We hopped onto a wall in the queue and ran back in some woods around the side of the building. Soon we found ourselves around the side of the house, walking into a forest. I became increasingly nervous as we stepped over a few barricades, cautioning us to stay out. There was no turning back at this point, though. If we were going to maybe get banned for this, at least we had to find what we were looking for. We searched around the woods for a while, pretty much finding nothing. The area back there didn't even seem large enough to house an attraction, so we started second-guessing the rumors altogether. At that moment, I walked around the hill we were on, and I saw an artificial-looking cave inside of it. I could have sworn I'd already looked there, but I guess I must have missed it somehow. There was an arrow-shaped sign beside it labeled, Abandon hope all ye who enter here, in a spooky Disney font. I thought that was a nice touch. Behind it, believe it or not, was the horrific bamboo sculpture we all heard so much about standing over the cave confidently. Jason sat the picture and stepped into the cave as we gazed in it in fear. The cave actually led to a queue line. They still had light, background music playing, which was mixed with the spooky sounds of the wind in the ocean. I heard about when explorers trespassed through the abandoned river country, there was music playing in the background. So I guess I thought maybe there was some reason they left this on too. That wasn't until I noticed what was next though, something I'll never forget to this day. The boat ride was actually running. The ride vehicles were these little wooden rowboats, and they were just cycling like a normal ride as if employees were there running it. However, there wasn't a single cast member anywhere in sight though. 
I guess at that point our curiosity got the best of us because we did something unimaginably stupid. We got onto the ride. There are things you can take back in this world, and I really wish this was taken as well. You can tell it was older fashioned technology than the other rides in the park. It almost seemed like it was incomplete, too. It was closer to Mr. Toad's wild ride level technology than anything else, having mannequins and wooden cutouts move in front of the ride vehicles we passed. In the first room, there was a figure of a mother and father hunched over in the corner of a room, while a boy in a raincoat watched from the dinner table. The mock sounds of the parents devouring something echoed throughout the room. Jason and I, bewildered, eyed each other, already ready to get off the ride. However, I wasn't getting in that water. Who knew what kind of machinery and chemicals were floating around inside there? Then the next room was somehow even worse than the first. The boy with the raincoat was in again, only he was a teenager this time. He was staring out of the side of a boat towards the figure of a blonde teenage girl reaching her hands up, drowning in the water. The sound effect in this room was just gargling and then someone's multiple attempts to speak. Horrified, I gazed up at the, at the boy as we exited the room and his head looked like it was in a different position, staring right at me. Then we entered a room with a green light shining from below the water. There was a massive statue of Walt Disney saying, Your dreams can come true if we only have the courage to pursue them. He was standing above the boy with the raincoat who was now a man and something about the massive size of Walt almost made it feel like a religious ex religious experience. The last room was the one that really got us though. The figures in this one were two teens dressed strangely like us laying out in the woods. Then a cutout of the man with the raincoat popped out in front of our boats. The sound effect this time was just weeping. <laughs> At this point, Jason was just done, and he said he was just going to get out of the boat. I urged him not to as we entered another room, this one filled with several tombstone busts, one being the man with the raincoat and the two others being us. Jason saw this and immediately jumped out of the boat. He started wandering through the water. I screamed for him to Jason, come back, but he didn't Jason, listen. He just swam into the darkness. Then I heard footsteps trudging through the water. I yelled his name out a few more times, but he was gone. Only this time, they were approaching me. I sat there in the darkness, not knowing what to do, just begging for the ride to go back to the loading area. Something then slammed against the back of the boat, thrusting me forward. I forced my eyes closed, just wishing for it to go away. Then it slammed against me again, harder this time. Then a third time. Only this time it was so hard, I slammed against the lap bar and opened my eyes. Much to my surprise and joy, I was back in the loading area for the ride. I hopped out of the boat and ran through the queue line so fast I could have won a marathon. On my way out, I turned back to look at the cave entrance one more time. It wasn't there now. It was just a hill again. To this day, I still don't know if it was ever really there or if, it, if I'd somehow lost it. I mean, I've told Disney security police and honestly any other authority who would listen about Jason's disappearance. Only this is that they've all denied the attraction ever existed in any capacity at all. I know what I saw though, and I know there's something back in those woods. So I guess the scariest ride in Disney World is really only a cover for the true horror that sits behind it.